That's right. Thanks very much, Narenda. Um, I think I got the memo about the jumper, but maybe not the hat. <laughs> um, so it's a real pleasure to be here today um, and for welcome to be sponsoring this BNA festive symposium. Um, and I, my, as uh, Narenda says, my name is uh, Kat Sebastian. I am head of the evidence team for mental health um, at Wellcome Trust. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about, about our mental health strategy, uh, both our vision and some upcoming funding opportunities. But before I focus in on mental health, um, just wanted to give you a bit of background about Welcome. Um, so many of you will know Welcome well, uh, but for those who don't, uh, we are a global charitable foundation that is financially and politically independent. Um, and our focus is on challenges, particularly to human health. Um, and we're mainly London based, although we do um, also have an office in Berlin. Um, and our London office is just down the road on Euston Square. Over the, over the last two or three years, uh, we've undergone a change in our strategy and we now operate under four integrated research programs. Most of our research is funded through a curiosity driven program known as discovery research. Um, and this extends the frontiers of knowledge about um, human health, life and well being. Um, and this is very sort of interdisciplinary. We welcome research um, from any discipline on any topic, as long as it's broadly within the remit of human health. Um, and we also have three complementary solutions focused programs, one of which is infectious disease, one of which is mental health, which I'll tell you more about, and the other is the intersection between climate and health. And these three strategic programs were chosen uh, because these three challenges represent some of the greatest issues to be facing us all in the next few decades. So what about mental health at Welcome? So what we want to do is to drive a step change in mental health science to find more effective mental health solutions. And we've realized that in order to do this, we need to focus our efforts to some extent. And we've chosen to focus on anxiety, depression, and psychosis. And this is not because um, other conditions aren't important, uh, but because these three conditions represent those conditions which are either extremely prevalent worldwide, such as anxiety, depression, um, or which are extremely debilitating, um, such as psychosis. And we take quite a broad definition. So we also include um, conditions such as bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorder, recognizing that, you know, as we were hearing from Liz, often there aren't these fine grain distinctions between the um, different conditions. Um, so we do recognize the need uh, for a, a transdiagnostic approach there as well. So in addition to funding research um, into these areas, we want to also build with us a mental health science community. So a big aim alongside our research funding aims is uh, what we call field building. So bringing together um, academics, those in industry, clinicians, and those with lived experience across a range of disciplines to come together um, to solve the problems um, that we face in mental health. And ultimately, what we want to do is to improve our ability to intervene as early as possible for these conditions. We see three main ways that we want to, uh, want to do this. One is to improve our understanding. So we will fund basic mechanistic research aimed at improving our understanding of how and why these conditions develop and also um, how and why treatments work. Um, so Liz was talking about back translation. That's also an important part of our approach. So taking treatments that we know work um, for specific symptoms and trying to understand why um, in an effort to uh, refine and improve existing interventions. Stratification is also a really important aim. Um, so can we better group patients by particular markers, whether they're biological, psychological, or social, um, so that we can enable more personalized interventions. And finally, how can we develop um, solutions to intervene as early as possible for these conditions? We see that in addition to funding research into understanding and translation, 
we need to support the mental health science field with what we're calling enabling elements. As I mentioned before, building the field of mental health science is a vital aim if we're going to have a, a vibrant and thriving mental health science community. We also need improved measures and harmonized measures so that everyone is talking about the same thing when we talk about anxiety, depression, or psychosis. We need improved data, whether that's large longitudinal data sets or data tools that allow us to um, address those problems of low sample sizes or poor reproducibility. And finally, we need to to have policy work so that we can take the findings from the research and make sure that they reach people via policy. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about lived experience um, because as I mentioned before, this is part of our field building aim. Um, and we have a dedicated lived experience team uh, within the mental health team at Wellcome. Um, that ensures that the voice of lived experience is included in all the work that we fund. Um, so we see lived experience, um, in this case of anxiety, depression and psychosis, of a unique form of knowledge, insight and expertise that comes from having experience of mental health challenges. And lived experience is central to our work in a number of ways. Um, firstly, we work with lived experience advisors in our work at Wellcome to ensure that all of our funding calls and all of our strategy is underpinned by the perspective of those with lived experience. Secondly, we ensure that all the projects that we fund include lived experience um, at every stage of the research pro process. And finally, we see lived experience as a central voice in this field building aim so that we have a, a mental health science community where the voice of lived experience is on an equal footing with all um, other forms of expertise in mental health. If you're conducting research and want to involve those with lived experience in your research, um, we ask um, for our funded research that all projects demonstrate clear plans for collaboration with lived experience experts. And this is at every stage, right from you know, the pre-planning stage, government, governance, design, delivery, and dissemination. And importantly, lived experience experts must be appropriately compensated for their time. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, I just wanted to give you a couple of funding opportunities that are coming up for mental health at Wellcome. Um, this is a, a bit more detail about the type of work that we fund. Um, so as I mentioned, it has to be related to anxiety, depression and psychosis. We fund interdisciplinary research from the subcellular to the social. Um, we fund both basic research and clinical interventions, um, and those with lived experience must be involved. Um, at present, we don't fund clinical research or work on service uh, provision or, or reorganization. Um, and um, at the moment, through the mental health stream of Welcome, we don't fund research on conditions other than anxiety, depression, and psychosis broadly defined. However, I do want to stress that through our discovery research program, uh, we welcome research proposals on any aspect of mental health science. So mental health scientists are, are lucky at Welcome. You have uh, potentially two routes uh, to funding through us. Um, and please do come and talk to us um, at our stand outside if you want more information about what we do and don't fund. Um, Upcoming in 2024, uh, we've got a couple of opportunities that might be of interest to BNA members. Um, in the spring, we are focusing um, a funding call on uh, how neuroscience can best uh, transform our understanding of anxiety, depression and psychosis. Um, I can't give more details right now, uh, but I can confirm that this opportunity will be coming in the spring. Um, and then in the summer, um, Again, similar to what Liz was talking about, um, we are working on a call focused on new and improved digital technology to improve early intervention. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and do come and speak to us at our standout. Thank you.